the new video. Who's gonna take care of the Death Star then? Hello guys and welcome to a new episode. As I've told you a few weeks ago, I had decided to build a couple of retro futuristic computer consoles reminiscent of films like 2001 A Space Odyssey or Alien from 1979 or the Alien Isolation video game that is based on that film. I collected tons of old TVs, switches, old knobs from audio equipment, connectors, but I also experimented with oscilloscopes and vector graphics generation and of course actual woodworking and metalworking on the furniture itself was involved as well. But since this is so much stuff we'll just have to talk about the different aspects of this undertaking one at a time and basically treat them as projects of their own which they basically are. Here is a sketch or concept drawing of what I'm planning the first computer console to look like. It is somewhat influenced by these desks here from the Alien Isolation games. So let's clean this drawing up a little bit and take a closer look at it. I want to install a modern computer inside and also have a widescreen LCD here in the middle. But I also want to have an older CRT like for example for retro gaming. But I also want to install various front panel segments that will have cool visual effects reminiscent of these classic science fiction movies. And for that purpose I collected a whole range of different LEDs and today we will build three different devices with these LEDs and that is what this video is going to be about. So I started by looking for rare or unusual signal lights on eBay and what I first scored is this big red signal lamp made by the German company Verma Signaltechnik which means Verma Signaling Technology and I got it for only 11 euros while normally these sell for around 50 or 60 euros. It appears that normally this lamp is lit by an ordinary incandescent light bulb with an Edison socket but that would be too boring for what I have in mind. For that purpose I bought 15 packages with 10 LEDs each. They are all in all 150 self blinking red undiffused 5mm LEDs and they already came with a 470 ohms resistor for each and every diode. Also with heat shrink but we won't need that in this project. Every single diode needs a resistor to limit the current. The 470 ohms resistors were chosen so that these LEDs could be powered with 12 volts without being damaged. But they are actually not just LEDs. They actually have an integrated circuit inside that makes them blink on their own. Now a board needs to be made that will hold the LEDs. I start with a standard 16 by 10 centimeters perf board. And I use a marker to draw a circle onto it. Another small piece will be added so that the circle can be completed. A knife is then used to weaken the board where you need it, making it possible to break off the parts that you don't need so that you can make a circle out of this board. And then a smaller additional piece is soldered onto this board. And now I try to solder as many of these 150 LEDs as possible onto the board while keeping a regular pattern. All cathodes are then directly connected with solder on the bottom side of the board. This is where the negative side of the power supply will be connected. Now a 470 ohms resistor is soldered to each and every anode. And the input sides of the resistors are again all connected together. Here is where a voltage of between plus 3 and 12 volts can be applied in order to power the LEDs. And in order to make that possible, two wires are connected to the cathodes and to the resistors. And now we can have a first test. At 12 volts, around 2 amperes are flowing. But uncovered, undiffused LEDs look cheap and not mysterious at all. Reminds you of the tacky signs you see in front of every other liquor store. Any kind of diffuser really will make the LEDs look better. And for that purpose, of course, the board is fastened inside the lamp's enclosure with MS polymer adhesive. And after a day of drying, we can now have our first test.
After startup, the LEDs blink roughly simultaneously. But after just a few seconds, they start to form random patterns. And the red diffuser lens gives it a more complex look and an almost spatial quality. If you take a look at it from another angle, the appearance totally changes. But after finishing this first device, I had a handful of these LEDs left. So I figured why not just build a second device while I'm at it that I can install on the same front panel. And I had to think of something that I bought over a year ago on a flea market here in Cologne for one euro. In case you don't recognize what this device is, I guess you will not be alone in the audience since this is a device for taking a look at slides without using a slide projector. So, well, I think I don't have to explain why this is kind of outdated and you don't really need it anymore. But I sometimes see these things that have this vintage look and that are really rare. I've never seen this before. So this is just what I want to have for this kind of installation. So what we find in the back of this device is basically just a transformer and a light bulb. But we will remove that, we don't need that anymore. And instead of that, we'll install four of these red self-blinking LEDs there on a little PCB. And it's really kind of neat to look at because the magnification of this lens is so big that you can never see all the four diodes at once. But when you move around, you can kind of discover what's inside. And I think this is just what you want to have in a science fiction prop like this. Something that is somewhat familiar, but has a mysterious touch so that you don't see right away what it's good for. Well, if it's good for anything that is. Okay, so these were extremely primitive ideas so far. No microcontrollers or programming required. Just a little bit of soldering basically. But the things that I've been using here, the signal lamp and this weird optical device are very rare of course and nobody's going to find that anywhere. So let's do it the other way around then and buy something that is abundant and cheap that anyone can get but that is a little more high tech. So this is an 8x8 LED matrix, RGB, red, green, blue LEDs, so they can display all kinds of colors. And this is based on WS2812B, or better known under the name NeoPixel. So this module is basically a knockoff of a more expensive Adafruit LED matrix. This one here you can get for 12 bucks. I got that on Amazon, link in the description. I think the original is a little more expensive though. And you can also find an Instructables link under the video because it's actually extremely simple to set this up. On the back side of the matrix, you have just a handful of pins, two ground pins, they are identical, D in, D out. If you only use one module, you only need D in for data. The other one I think is only when you daisy chain several modules. And then you have a supply voltage pin for five volts and you will need an external power supply for this. The Arduino itself can um, not give you these five volts over its internal regulator. It will um, be too much, the current will be too high. But other than that, there are really no problems. You can find presets for all kinds of crazy programs or effects online. Um, if you already have an Arduino that is. And as you can see here, you can use that basically as a screen, putting out words, for example, but you can also do all kinds of crazy effects um, like this stuff here. But again, I don't like non-diffused LEDs. So this time it was really all just about changing the look of it a little bit. And here I have a piece of transparent plastic. This is just a cover from an old meter that is broken. Normally I wouldn't throw something like this away, but I actually have a whole pile of new old stock meters that will be used in this project this particular one is not needed anymore. So it just so happens that it fits pretty well around the NeoPixel matrix here, but I also want to diffuse the LEDs. And for that, I just cut out a little bit of uh, paper because that actually works pretty well. And by slightly increasing the distance between the paper and the LEDs, you can get all kinds of interesting blur effects and stuff like that. So I basically first glued the paper inside with double-sided tape, and then I glued the matrix inside this transparent plastic part. And then I prepared some of the front panels that we will use in this 
actual project. So these are basically just pieces of aluminum sheets and I used an angle grinder to cut holes inside. Then I fitted this piece of transparent plastic on there and then again fastened it with MS polymer. And I also did the same thing for that weird optical device that you saw a couple of minutes ago and I installed that on the same panel. And I also did the same at least preliminarily with our first LED device and now let's take a look at what all that looks like. So I don't know about you, but I think this all looks pretty cool now that it's installed on these aluminum sheets and I can now kind of imagine what the finished computer console will look like. The next episode, by the way, should come rather quickly this time because I'm actually almost finished with the next big thing. That's this 128 LED matrix that I'm really building from scratch. This time it's also an electronic challenge because I really have to build the drivers and everything. Not as easy as NeoPixels. And if you like this little video, then give it a like because I really need the feedback. And if you like it very much, visit my Patreon. And if you're looking for regular updates, maybe you should check out my Instagram and you can find a link to that also in the video description.